Hello and welcome back to another tasty tutorial. Yesterday I'll be showing you how to create this rigid body brick wall super quickly, super fast. I apologize if my voice is a bit off. I'm still kind of recovering from Corona. Please bear with me on this one. As always, there's going to be a free resource file in the description below on my Gumroad that you can go and download for free. In any case, let's get into the video. So I'm working in Blender 3.3. In our case, I'm just going to delete the camera and the lamp by shift clicking them and then pressing X to delete. I apologize, but I still haven't managed to make the screencast keys working. If you have any ideas on OBS or something like that, that can actually show the keyboard. So I don't have to explain each and every shortcut. That would be great. But either way, I'll just try and make sense of some of the shortcuts that are it's important for this tutorial. We're going to leave our little cube. I'm just going to rename it into brick. I'm going to press one on my numpad and I'll just resize this little bad boy a bit. So S, Z and scale it down on the Z to 0 0.04. Press GZ and then move it up so it's nice and flush with the X axis. And then I'm just going to press S, Y and then also scale it on the Y axis. Something like that. Maybe we can scale it on the Z just a bit more so it's just a bit flatter. Control A and reset the scale. So numpad one, we can just press GZ and just hold shift and then drag it down. So we have a bit more space between the X and the brick. So now it's time to make our little wall right here. So we're gonna use a couple of modifiers. We're gonna add a couple of array modifiers, then just press shift D to duplicate. So the first one, I'll leave the factor to be 1.01, .01, something like that. So we have a bit of a gap between our bricks. And the second one, the factor is going to be zero. And the Z, I'll put it up to, let's say, 2.02, .02, something like that. We will be duplicating this exact brick. So we will fill out the space in between the other bricks. After that, I'm just going to add a bevel and a subdivision surface, something like that. Increase the segments of the bevel to two, the amount to 0 0.015, and then increase maybe the level viewport to two. But in order to have a more stable reproduction, let's just leave it at one. This is how it should look like right now. Now it's time to make a couple more bricks. So I'm just going to increase the count of both the arrays to five, something like that. So the system can still manage it. Then I'm going to press Shift D and duplicate this row, press G, Z, and then and move it so it's right in between the gaps. That's why we left that Z gap right there. Then press G, X, and I just move it to the left so we have that nice little checkered effect. Before we move on, I'm just gonna add a Shift A plane and then scale it up, Control A, and reset the scale so we get a better reproduction when we are working with rigid bodies. Okay, so now it's time to set up the rigid body system. So how do we do it? We go into our physics properties, and then first on the plane, we're gonna click rigid body, type active to passive. What this means is that this guy is not gonna move when we press play. So for example, if we put it to active and then play our loop from the beginning, this object will fall because it's actually following its rigid body settings. But if we have it passive, it's gonna remain there, but it's still gonna hold its collision properties, so to speak. Next up, we can click on one of the bricks and just set up the rigid body and we can leave it at active because we want it to contribute to the simulation and the source, we're gonna use final. And what final means, it takes into account all of the modifiers that were used in the chain. So we're gonna use the final one. However, now if we press play, you'll notice that all of our little bricks are moving and that's because we haven't divided them. Now, how do we divide all of them in a, say, more efficient manner? So I'm gonna go back into my modifiers on the array, I'm just going to press Control A, Control A to apply all of these guys. And I'm going to do the same with the duplicate. So Control A, Control A to apply. Then I'm going to shift select both of them, press Tab to go into edit mode and press P and separate by loose parts. And this is going to separate all of the bricks that we've created. There should be about 50 or something. So I'm going to press Tab to exit the edit mode and I'm going to press shift control alt c origin to geometry but you can also do that by going under object and then pressing set origin origin to geometry now if I press play you'll notice that only the bricks that had the rigid body setting are working so how do we translate that to the other bricks so we're going to choose one of the bricks that has the rigid body and then I'm going to press c and just select all of the bricks that I need shift select the brick that has the rigid body and then i'm just going to press space 
and search for copy from active. So this is gonna copy the settings of the active selection, which is the one in this yellowish outline to all of the orange ones. And if I press play, you can see our simulation has all of these guys working. We have one rogue one, so I'm just gonna delete that bad boy and just leave them like this. So yeah, this is basically it. This is the most basic setup you can use right now. But let's say, for example, we want this wall to destroy a bit differently. So I'm gonna show you something that I saw in a tutorial a while back using constraints. Now, fair warning, this is a very buggy feature for some reason. Whenever I tried to play with it, it took a bit of time to get it working. I'll show you some of the stuff that I encountered while I was working on this stuff, so you can try it out for yourself. Now I'm gonna choose all of the bricks, so I'm gonna just press C, choose all of the bricks in the scene, and then I'm gonna go under my object, then in the rigid body section, I'll choose connect, and this is gonna create these axes right here. Now, if I press play, you can see what starts happening. Basically, it's gonna hit the wall and the wall just goes <laughs> completely ape shit which is fine, it's okay. We need to work a bit more on these constraints. Now, what these constraints are doing, they are actually tying up the bricks one to another. And as you can see, we have this enabled, meaning that the constraint is enabled, but then you also have breakable, which means that the constraints can actually be broken if a specific type of force or uh, some number of force is applied to them. How do we make this apply to all of them without clicking on each one separately? You just hold alt and then click on the breakable and this will set this breakable option for every single one of them now let me press play and you can see what's going to start happening it breaks but again it starts to freak out a bit and you can see some of these guys just going off of the rails completely so what i can set up additionally is the threshold which is the amount of this force under which the brick wall is going to cave in for example we can do let's say click on the threshold and we say i don't know two or three let's say and whenever you do this hold alt and then press enter and this is going to apply this change through all of the constraints as well so this means the bricks are going to be broken more easily however we still have this bit of freaking out down here also this is not very realistic it's just a fun experiment to do so one way of resolving this at least this worked for me was uh, this option right here override iterations it's kind of like resolution for rigid body systems in any case i just press alt ticket and then the iterations i bump them i don't know to 25 or something hold alt so the change is applied to all of them and now if I press play, these guys should be way more stable or the resolution should be way better. So in this case, yeah, it's kind of acting a bit, a bit better. We still have some issues like some final touches. It's the surface response. Uh, basically what's happening is a lot of these guys also because of the constraints have this weird mm, turning around sliding action. So I just turned the friction to 0.9 or something like that. I'm also gonna turn this guy to 0.9. Now, fair point. Now, if we start choosing our bricks, we're also gonna choose the constraints. So what I would strongly suggest in this occasion is just go under your scene selection, add a new collection, and this new collection, rename it into constraints. And these are gonna be basically holding your constraints uh, section. So I'm putting them in into the constraints. And now if I don't want to see them and I just want to select, or I just want to select, for example, the bricks, I just right click and select objects and it selected all of the objects. In this case, also the plane and the sphere. So I just make sure that the plane and the sphere are not selected. And then I just increase the friction of the body. And again, I repeat what I was doing earlier. So copy from active. And this is going to copy the settings exactly as they should be uh, in every object. So you have a lot less of that spinniness and that sort of stuff. And again, this, this stuff can be applied to many things. You can make a sphere crack, you can make a huge amount or a huge stack of these and just destroy them completely. So, you know, uh, this is completely, completely up to you. 
super easy trick and yeah so that's gonna be it for this tutorial hopefully you've learned something new hopefully you've learned something useful as always there's a free resource file in the description below that you can download that you can use for yourself and yeah make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video it helps me out a lot and if you have any comments make sure to write them down in the comment section i always check it out and i always try to answer any questions that you might have so yeah that's it and i'll see you in the next one Bye.